How are we doing? Good. All right, everybody. We've got uh, Georgia Tech quarterbacks coach Chris Winky, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, open right up to questions, beginning with uh, Kelly Quinlan. Go ahead, Kelly. Coach, obviously um, a new opportunity here at Georgia Tech, kind of a, a fresh room other than Jeff, who, who played a lot. Kind of what's your approach been like, and, and what have your meetings been like with the young quarterbacks that you have in your room? Well, I'd love to tell you that our meeting has been great, but we haven't been able to meet with them. So I got here and uh, just getting familiar with the, with you know the the rest of the people in the building, and and obviously we we hit the ground running recruiting. So got here and spent a little time in the building, spent some time with, with obviously the rest of the offensive staff, uh, trying to get familiar with our personnel, and then hit the hit the road recruiting. So. For the last couple of weeks, just got off the road, and and uh, now we're trying to get organized here and get ready for a quick turnaround for spring ball. So, in terms of obviously the quarterback room, uh, we haven't had an opportunity to spend a whole lot of time together. Um, obviously, I see them here around the building, and and we'll start to crank that up. So, I'll get a better understanding of kind of these guys' approach, how they learn, all those different things that. Uh, that will be obviously important as as we head into spring ball. So I have a better understanding. A so question now from Rod McKenzie. Go ahead, Rod. Hey, coach. You you have a an incumbent quarterback in Jeff Sims, but you also have the luxury of having uh, uh, someone like uh, Gibson, who you got out of the portal, who has quarterback experience. So that that makes I imagine that makes your job a little easier when it comes to game time. Yeah, it's it's always nice knowing that that uh, the guys you know been in the battle before, and and uh, you know I'm excited about our room. You know, you got a guy like Jeff Sims who I think is is obviously very athletic um, and can do all the things that we're going to ask him to do within our offense. And and you bring in a guy, you know, Zach Gibson from the portal who has playing experience and and had an opportunity to you know to play at the collegiate level, and then. You know, obviously a young quarterback in, in Zach Pyron who um, just love the way he approaches everything that he does um, in terms of the classroom and, and the weight room and and all the things that, that we expect out of a quarterback. So, uh, again, time will tell, not have an opportunity to get on the grass and coach these guys and spend a lot of time with them. Um, I just like uh, I like the mindset of the guys. I like their approach. Um, and I think Jeff is. Uh, has gotten uh, an opportunity to be to be really special. Um, I think he's very athletic. Obviously, has the arm talent to make all the throws that we're going to have him um, ask him to make in our offense. So, uh, at the end of the day, it's um, you know it's going to be a work in progress. And and I love competitive rooms. And I think these guys will will be very competitive. And uh, uh, so I'm excited. I'm looking forward to to uh, to spring ball right around the corner. A question now from Ken Segura. Go ahead, Ken. Uh, Chris, I'm curious, looking at Jeff, kind of where do you see you can help him the most? Well, I think it's it's always unique when you you bring in some new offensive coaches and, um, you know, the the philosophy, the scheme, the verbiage will be different than, than what he's accustomed to. Um, so there's always a learning curve. Um, the... You know, the biggest thing for us is to get these guys comfortable and confident. Jeff is is a smart young man. Um, and so for me, it's just about it's me learning as much as I can about him in terms of his understanding, what I call FBI, which is football intelligence. What you know, where is he at right now? Um, and and then obviously implement uh, our new scheme, which he's going to have to learn along with the other guys. So um, how fast can they learn? Are they a functional thinker? Can they take the information that's being taught in the classroom and, and apply it out on the field? So I don't know any of those things and won't know them till we, till we get into uh, the nuts and the bolts of, of, of obviously installing our offense and getting on the field and coaching them. But when you really look at Jeff on the surface, obviously I've had an opportunity to go back and watch his, his games that he's already already played. And what jumps off the screen is his athletic ability. Um, there's no question that um, he can make every throw. Um, now it's, hey, the rhythm and the timing of the passing game, which is going to be imperative for him to understand what we expect from him. But I think the sky's the limit for this young man. Um, and he brings a lot to the table. He's a special talent. Take a question now from Zach Klein. Go ahead, Zach. 
Hey, Coach, appreciate you doing this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but were you out of football last year? Were you uh, away from the game? I was. So I uh, had the opportunity to spend a lot of time just training quarterbacks at all levels. Um, had some guys in the offseason and kind of flew around the country and um, spent a little time down in, in South Florida training and, and helping coach a high school team down in, in Florida a couple days a week. So I stayed involved in the game, which was great. Uh, but it also gave me an opportunity to take a step back kind of observe, see what's going on in the game, what's changing, different uh, offensive philosophies. And, and um, so it was really take a deep breath, recalibrate, and, and now very excited about this opportunity here at Georgia Tech. Yeah, from the outside looking in, it seems like that was like the ultimate gig, right? You set your own schedule. You don't have to recruit. You're with the family. <laughs> like, it, But then like, the, what, what was the itch to get back in it? And uh, what about this opportunity? It's like, you know what? If I'm going back in, I think this is the right fit for me. Yeah, so I think yeah, yes uh, to to the first part of your question. It's it's always nice to take a step back and and sometimes watch from afar, right, and be able to create your own schedule. But I think uh, the competitive side of me uh, hated being away from it, right. And I I understand there's listen, there's a lot of variables that go into coaching. It's not just the X's and the O's and building relationships with kids, but hey, now you're back getting in the grind of recruiting, which is 24/7, 365, as we all know. So. Um, I wanted to get back into that structured schedule. Um, that's what I was accustomed to my whole life. And, um, it's very refreshing after being out, albeit very nice to be able to do some things you don't typically get to do. I've got two young kids, a 15 and 13 year old, which typically I don't get to spend that quality time with them. So, uh, what a great opportunity to do that. Um, but with that being said, looking for the right opportunity, um, to be with people that I believe are really good ball coaches in a philosophy that I truly believe in. And Coach Long, uh, I've known him for a while and, and really spent a year with him. And um, in, in not only the success that he's had over his career, but the philosophy and in, in what we're going to do offensively. So it was a perfect fit. Um, worked with Brent Key in the past. Um, recruited Mike Daniels High School when he was a high school coach up in Princeton. Played in the National Football League with Traveris Tillman. So. A lot of familiarity with this staff was very appealing to me and one of the reasons I chose to come here. So a question now from Kelly. Coach, you hit on one of the things I was going to ask about, which was your relationship with Coach Long and Coach Key, but also just um, kind of you have the experience of having played in the NFL, having done this at college at a high level, having coached at college. What do you think that brings to the table when it's time to coach? It seems like a lot of quarterbacks really benefit from working with someone who's been in the fire before. Just how do you feel like that impacts your coaching abilities? Yeah, I think it's, uh, I've been blessed to be able to coach at all three levels. Obviously I've played at all three levels. So I, I think those experiences that I can go back on and share with these young men, um, you know, I was having a conversation with one of them the other day and said, guys, I'm really just an older version of you. OK, I'm going I went through exactly what you guys are going through right now. So you don't have a guy that's coaching you OK, that has never done it, never played the position, never had to face adversity. I've done all that. OK, I've been at the highest of highs, winning national championships and being part of a Super Bowl team to, um, you know, throwing six interceptions in a game. So I've, I've been at both ends of the spectrum. And so I think that should give our players comfort, guys, especially at the quarterback position that. Listen, we have a guy that one cares about us, understands the game, has developed players at every single level, okay, and played it himself and did it himself. So the combination of all of that collectively, I think um, these players understand and respect that and know that, hey, uh, when he's telling us something, listen, not that he has all the answers, but he's been there and done it. And I, and I think I, as a coach, sometimes revert back to some of those times. Hey, when I see a guy struggling, right? I think it's a great opportunity to share with them that, hey, back when I was going through this, this is one of the things that helped me overcome that. So I think the relationship is the most important thing. I need to understand these guys. They need to understand me, and there needs to be a trust factor built, okay? Um, I'm old school, blue collar. I like to get after it, okay? That's how I was brought up. That's how I was coached. I will always respect our players, but I will demand, okay, that they do it a certain way, and I think that is refreshing for them. I think they're looking forward to it. Um, and I think the opportunity um, to be able to have played the game and coached the game at all levels 
um, will certainly be a plus for our quarterbacks here at Georgia Tech. We'll wrap up with the questions we have in queue. We'll go Ken and then Zach and then Ron. Hey, Coach. Uh, going back to Gibson, you look at what he did at, at Akron. Uh, he seemed like a, a quarterback that did, did not make very many mistakes, didn't throw any interceptions. How, how much of a, a fit would he be for the system you're going to run? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal, right? It's my job, okay, to prepare these guys to have success on Saturdays. One of the things that I share with our guys um, all the time and every quarterback that I've ever coached is, hey, let's do the preparation. Let's make sure we go above and beyond to, to do those things so that Saturday we can go have some fun. Um, let's work hard. Let's prepare. Let's create confidence throughout the course of the week. Uh, let's go let it fly on Saturdays. And when you look at a guy like Zach, who has playing experience and minimal mistakes uh, will, will, will fit into our offense perfectly, right? But it's my job to put them in a position to try to eliminate as many mistakes as possible. That's through the coaching and the teaching and the preparation that allows them to be able to make those decisions. Back to what I alluded before. Hey, are you a functional thinker? We're going to teach you, okay, that, hey, this is what we're looking at. This is what we, where, we, where we expect the ball to go to. Now those guys have to go execute that. That's the one thing that's hard for me going from a player to a coach is I can't cross the white line. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be their job and their responsibility. The great thing is Zach's got a foundation, okay, where he's played really good football, okay, and protected the ball. It's our number one thing in the quarterback room, protect the football, okay, at all costs. And I think uh, when you have a guy that's already proven that, uh, he will naturally fit into what we're asking our guys to do. When we talk to Travaris coming up, um, how many picks is he going to say he had on you in practice at Carolina or give you an opportunity to talk some trash? <laughs> she, did you just light him up every day? You want to talk some trash, Coach? No, I, I really don't. I, don't. I don't need to talk trash. I used to light those guys up every day. So, um, And I can promise you he never had a pick on me. So he can say what he wants, but he's never had a pick on me. But uh, great teammate. It was nice to, to see another familiar face in the building. Um, just really good, solid guy, first and foremost. Obviously, he was a great player and um, excited to be able to spend every day with him now trying to, to get us to where I believe we belong, okay? And that's winning football games, and uh, albeit he'll be on the other side of the ball, and we're going to battle against each other every day in practice. It'll be fun, and it'll probably be a little trash talking out there for sure. Appreciate you. Wrap us up, Ken. Um, you at Florida State, uh, you, you played for a couple of names that a lot of people around here know pretty well, Bobby Bowden and, and Mark Rick. Tell me a little bit about kind of playing for them, but maybe also you, the influence they had on your your coaching style. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, Coach Bowden is the reason I chose to go to Florida State. Um, I, I say it uh, to everybody that I talk to or who asks me about him. He's the greatest human being I've ever met. I've met a lot of good ones. Um, uh, he was a faith-based man that uh, did things the right way. And, um, you know, I chose Florida State, obviously had some options, and, and I chose it because of him. And he put us in an environment uh, to not only grow as football players, but to grow as young men and, and go be successful for the rest of our lives. And so, obviously, that was one of the tougher things I had to deal with as Coach passed away, uh, and I attended his funeral. Um, obviously, Coach Rick was my quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, a uh, familiar name here in the Atlanta area, as we all know. Um, but again, the guy that really built my foundation after I played six years of professional baseball, I came back and, and uh, you know, it was starting at the ground level with him. And, and he helped me um, accomplish all the things that, that I was able to accomplish. So I'm, I'm indebted to both of those guys. And I think they were really a huge part of, of why I decided to get into coaching. Um, the way that they, they, they approached it, the knowledge they gave me, the things they gave back. And so uh, both of those guys obviously were very instrumental in terms of my philosophy, how I want to coach guys, because um, I remember how they coached me. So it's nice to come back into this league, um, very familiar with this league. We had a lot of success, um, you know, when I was a player down there at that other place. And uh, I expect us to have a lot of success here at Georgia Tech. All right. Thank you very much, Coach.